Okay, so I'm going to introduce uh, Dara Shah, who is an assistant professor in the School of Mathematical and Natural Sciences in the Biodesign Center for Fundamental and Applied Microbiomics at ASU. So she got her PhD at the University of Wisconsin in Milwaukee. Uh, she was a postdoc fellow at Brown University uh, and a teaching fellow at Harvard University and a scientist at Egeos Pharmaceuticals. So she is interested in um, enzymes in the human microbiome and the host microbiome interactions and how that affects metabolism and physiology of others. And I'm going to Thanks, Josh, for, uh, for the introduction. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Dara. Um, and today I will talk about enzymes as metabolic signal modulator for the human microbiome. Um, and you can pick up your mask on Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Thanks. Hello, everyone. Uh, uh, so we all know that we have millions of microbes that reside within us. And uh, in past decade or so, uh, we have learned a lot about correlation between fluctuations in specific microbial population and how they, uh, how they create specific disorders. However, the question that still remains unanswered is, for, in many of these cases, is that how the microbial fluctuation actually translate into those, those disorders, right? So what is the mechanism? How does that actually happen? And this is what we are interested in. And so I'll tell you a little bit about uh, the approach that we take to, uh, to, to understand this. Um, so enzymes, uh, so bacteria that we have inside us have thousands, hundreds of enzymes, which can make many different types of molecules, small molecules. And uh, we, can, uh, we, can, we can think about those small molecules as signal, which can be good or bad. And those signals can affect host physiology or metabolism, either negatively or positively. And, and that's what we are interested to, uh, to learn, uh, uh, interested to learn. So in, in short, what we are thinking is, uh, is the signal really one of the mechanisms uh, with which uh, the metabolic, uh, the microbial fluctuations are correlated with the disease? Right, so is that how the diseases this are generated due to the fluctuations in the microbial population? And there are a few different areas that we work in right now. Uh, one area is um, GABA and taurine synthesis, which both of them are neurotransmitters. Um, so we are trying to understand what they do due to that role in dementia and neurodegenerative disorders. Other uh, area that we uh, work in is amino acid breakdown, uh, which is tyrosin degradation that you see in the middle. And uh, that's due to its role in metabolic disorders and rare genetic disorders. And uh, we also are looking uh, globally at sulfation uh, as, as, as a way to break down uh, different drugs and how uh, microbes play a role in this. But today I'll be talking about uh, two of the projects. Uh, one is neurotransmitter synthesis by microbes and, uh, and uh, amino acid degradation. So the first thing that uh, I would like to introduce uh, is, is uh, microbes that make neurotransmitters and how we can use that uh, to help patients that have dementia. Now, you know that dementia is, is, a, is a very debilitating disorder. And um, in addition to, to the loss of normal cognitive functions of the patients, uh, there is a huge emotional loss for caregivers as well. Um, and uh, worldwide, there are around 55 million uh, uh, people suffering with dementia, and that number uh, just keeps going. So um, there are studies um, that show that uh, neurotransmitters like gamma amino butyric acid, which is GABA, shown right there, and um, hypotaurine or taurine, uh, both of these are neurotransmitters, uh, they help patients with, uh, that, uh, patients with dementia. So uh, we set out to look for pathways in bacteria of the human microbiome that can make these molecules, uh, make these neurotransmitters. What we find is uh, many uh, gut microbes have uh, a protein. Uh, they have a, a protein that is thought to make this, uh, this uh, neurotransmitter, which is GABA. Um, uh, GABA is made from glutamate, which is a major excitatory neurotransmitter. GABA is a major inhibitory neurotransmitter. And the enzyme that uh, converts uh, or Catalyzed this reaction is called glutamatic oxalase. Um, so we find this in gut microbes. Um, and so, um, and another set of studies, people also show that uh, there is the specific type of bacterial genus, um, uh, which is prominent in gut, uh, that is uh, that is show that shows fluctuations in patients with dementia versus controls, control uh, controls. 
So we decided to set out to set out with, uh, to go and identify the genus and see what type of proteins the, the, the cell bacteria have. So we uh, we uh, we actually looked at the fragilis, which is the gut microbe, uh, prominent gut microbe, and then we we found that it has a protein that looks like rheumatic oxidase, but nobody has studied that protein before. Nobody showed that it actually makes GABA. So we uh, isolated and purified this enzyme, we characterized this enzyme, and here at the bottom, what you see is an activity assay of, of this protein, where you see in the absence of that protein, we don't see formation of GABA, but in the presence of the protein, we do see formation of GABA. So it, it tells us that this, this bacterial enzyme does make uh, neurotransmitter GABA. Now, another molecule, as you, uh, as, if you remember that I mentioned, is taurine. And taurine is also can act as a neurotransmitter. It takes the same pathway that GABA takes. So having both of them together can have nice combinatorial effect. So uh, what we found is that we, we did not see any protein that looked like this enzyme, which basically makes taurine in any of the gut microbes. So our hypothesis, what we started with is that uh, does that mean both these reactions are chemically very, very similar. The mechanism is very similar. So the hypothesis that we have right now is that does glutamate decarboxylase from the gut bacteria can also make taurine an addition to making the nitric acid. Um, and this is what we are in, in process of uh, figuring out right now. But with, with that, what we would like to do is we know that there are native glutamate decarboxylases in the gut, um, which may GABA from glutamate. Additionally, what we are doing right now is creating um, engineered enzymes or variants of this native enzyme that can actually alter the specificity and make taurine as one of the products. And then uh, the idea is to use them as probiotics. Uh, so that's pretty much about uh, dementia. And this will basically, a combination of these two can help patients with dementia. The second project that I briefly mentioned is uh, tyrosine uh, degradation, um, and that is correlated with diagenetic disorders or metabolic disorders. Um, it, in the top, on the top that you see is a tyrosine degradation pathway. Tyrosine is an amino acid, and takes, there are five, five steps which are involved in breaking down this amino acid. And each step is catalyzed by a unique enzyme, and they are labeled as P135. If there are defects in any of these enzymes, there are five different disorders that can occur uh, due to that, and these are type 1, 2, and 3 tyrosinemias, alkaptonuria, and Hawkinsonuria. And uh, this is just a, a, a brief, uh, um, brief introduction to these disorders, but the quality of life of these patients is very, very poor. So if there is a way that we can help these patients, that, that, would, be, uh, that, that would be fantastic. So type 1 tyrosinemia is the, the most moderate type of tyrosinemia where um, patients develop liver, cancers over, liver cancer over time and then the death age is generally one to years. Alkeptonuria has a very painful arthritis and then there are pigment uh, deposition uh, excretion, as you can see in these pictures. And Hawkinsonuria um, generally has symptoms of metabolic acidosis, stunting, and generally in a very type. And uh, type two and type three tyrosinemia are not as morbid, but but they uh, they um, decrease the quality of life significantly due to uh, corneal adversities. People go blind over time. So we we looked at this and we we, we decided, you know, what can we do to 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 do uh, to help these patients if we think about microbes and the tyrosin degradation problem. So the idea is that uh, how can we use microbial system or microbial enzymes to divert this pathway in a way that patients uh, of all these five disorders can benefit from it. So here is what we are trying to do uh, currently. So this on the right hand side that you see is a tyrosine carabolic pathway that is generally present in humans. And as I said, if there is a defect in that pathway, those five different types of disorders can occur. I'm not showing the whole pattern, I'm only showing first and second step over here. Um, so we, we actually um, have uh, found an enzyme that uh, actually catalyzes the same, so takes the same substrate as this enzyme in this pathway. Basically what it does, it diverts the pathway from going here to in this direction, right? So you don't create any of the, the products that are harmful if there are defects on this uh, on these enzymes on the normal pathway, on the normal route. 
So we are just basically diverting or we are bifurcating the metabolic pathway so that uh, we, we can avoid those, uh, uh, those symptoms. And uh, the uh, very interesting thing that we have, a uh, system that we have is uh, this molecule over here gives very beautiful brown pigmentation. Whereas when we go in the desired pathway route, this molecule that's formed by the microbial enzyme does not give any pigmentation. So we decided to mix these two enzymes and we did. And what we see is the decrease in the pigmentation. And that decrease in the pigmentation tells you that there is a metabolic bifurcation that is going on already. Already, and um, uh, this on the bottom, um, that's, that's just an annotation of uh, how we see the decrease in the pigmentation. Um, but what we are trying to, uh, what we are trying to go from here is that we would like to show this that we are using different formats to show that this works. And the best part about this is that you can actually modulate how much bifurcation you want. It's 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 not just one for what it's not zero or hundred percent. You know, there is there are ways that you can modulate this. So depending on what kind of patient you're working with, if you can modulate it, 0%, 50%, 100%, that, that can help those patients. So you can actually uh, have us personalized therapeutics for this. And uh, I think with that, I would uh, say thank you. And uh, you can reach out to me. Here is my email address. If you want to learn more about what we do, please reach out to me. And uh, you can find me in Biodesign B on the platform. Thank you very much.